Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Mass protests in defense of democracy and the indigenous flag held in Bolivia. Protests for democracy and free education spread across schools in Swaziland. At least 10 migrants killed and thousands detained in violent raids in Libya. 24,000 Kaiser Permanente health workers authorize strike in the United States. In our first story, we take a look at Bolivia, where thousands of people took to the streets on October the 12th. The mass mobilization were held under the banner of Great Vipalazo. Organized by the movement towards socialism, the protests were held in defense of the indigenous flag or the Vifala. Protesters also gathered in defense of democracy and rejected the coup attempts by the far right. Marches and demonstrations were held across all nine departments on Tuesday. 12th October is also commemorated as the Day of Indigenous Resistance in Bolivia. As per local reports, people gathered in the cities of Cochabamba, Yasuiba, Trinidad, Santa Cruz and Aurora, among others. President Luis Arce also participated in a mass rally in La Paz. Indigenous communities were joined by several workers' unions in the demonstrations. Tuesday marked the second day of mobilization by progressive forces in Bolivia. Massive counter-protests were held against a work stoppage called by right-wing groups on October 11th. This was after right-wing governor Luis Camacho was summoned in relation to the 2019 coup. The work stoppage was denounced as an attempt to seek immunity for those who were guilty. Camacho and his supporters also insulted the Vifala, which is a national symbol in Bolivia. Kosachan News reported that Monday's strike failed in almost every department. Meanwhile, hundreds of people marched in support of the government of President Arce. In our next story, military and police forces have been deployed to suppress protests in schools across Swaziland. Organizing as part of the country's democracy now struggle, students have been protesting for over a month. They are demanding the release of all political prisoners, including two members of parliament. They are also demanding the abolition of the country's thin kundla system. Other demands include free and quality education and improved learning conditions. The Communist Party of Swaziland has stated that over 80 schools have been shut down indefinitely during the protests. Students across 50 primary and high schools held protests on October the 11th. Armed police threw tear gas canisters and fired live rounds. At least 10 students were arrested and one child was shot in the leg. Armed police entered the John Wesley and MDS schools again on October the 12th. The ongoing protests in Swaziland schools are part of the wave of protests which began in the country in May. Protesters are also demanding an end to the absolute rule of King M. Swati III. Other demands include economic reforms amid conditions where over 60% of people are living in poverty. The king has responded with severe violence. Nearly 100 people were killed. Hundreds of others have been arrested. In our next story, Libyan forces have been accused of using unnecessary and disproportionate force to detain African migrants. Over 4,000 migrants were detained in a widespread crackdown earlier this month. Libyan authorities claim that it was a high-security operation against alleged criminals and undocumented immigrants. Around 500 migrants managed to escape from the Gherian Detention Center on October the 6th. They were reportedly chased by guards who opened fire using live ammunition. According to a United Nations official, at least four people were killed. The International Organization for Migration reported that six people were shot and killed at a Tripoli detention center again on October the 3rd. At least 20 others were wounded. Libyan forces detained around 900 people last Friday. According to the UNHCR, migrants and other refugees are being held in crowded and unsanitary conditions. Hundreds of people have gathered at a United Nations office in Tripoli in recent weeks. Most of them are asylum seekers with pending claims seeking help to leave the country. Migrants from sub-Saharan Africa make their way through Libya to try and reach Italy. United Nations officials have also said that Libyan forces have expelled people to the region without due process. And for our final story, we go to the United States, where over 24,000 health workers are set to go on strike. 
workers employed by Kaiser Permanente in the states of Oregon and California have authorized the action. The strike vote was held between 1st and 10th October and passed by 96% votes. Workers are protesting low wages and poor working conditions made worse during the pandemic. They are members of the United Nurses Associations of California or the Union of Healthcare Professionals. Kaiser has proposed a two-tier wage and benefit system in which new hires will receive lesser pay and health protections. The Los Angeles Times reported that the plan would cut wages of new hires by 26 to 39% in 2023. Workers have rejected the proposal and are demanding a 4% pay increase each year of the contract. They have also demanded a commitment from the company to hire more nurses to address understaffing. Kaiser has offered a 1% per year pay increase with additional lump sum amounts. The union has issued a 10-day notice to Kaiser and both sides must continue negotiations. If the strike does take place, it will include nurses, pharmacists, midwives and other care workers. Around 7,000 workers who are members of the United Steelworkers Union have also voted to strike if necessary. That's all we have for today's episode. Thank you for watching. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you.